Chinese cars are going to take over the world. Actually, of course, they're not going to take over the world. Cars aren't scented. They can't do that. What I mean is that the Chinese car manufacturing industry is going to take over the car world. That's what I meant. Now, we all think about Chinese cars, you know, a little bit of a snigger. We just reckon they only make cheap little knockoffs of Western cars and, you know, people produce videos on them, stuff like that. It's not like that really though. You see, the Chinese have actually been leaders in EV technology for quite a while now because they've been selling them in the home market for a long time and in other markets as well. For instance, Chinese cars are very popular in Norway. In fact, Norway is the first country where people buy more electric cars than internal combustion engine cars. But actually in this video, I'm not just talking about Chinese EVs. I'm also talking about some normal internal combustion engine models as well. Anyhow, I'm going to talk you through the Chinese car manufacturers that you need to know about, and particularly the cars they're going to be producing, which you, eventually, or your friends and family, will be buying. Probably through CarWow. And to do that, you can click on the pop-out banner up there from the link in the description below to see how much you can save on a new car through CarWow. Anyway, let's go on with this video. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about China's version of Tesla. It's called Neo, and they started selling cars in 2014. And just like Tesla, they started by selling a sports car. Speaking of sports cars, the Neo EP9 holds the lap record for an EV around the Nürburgring. It did a time of six minutes, 45 seconds. And you can compare that to the Tesla Model S Plaid's time of seven minutes, 35 seconds. So well done, Neo. Oh, yeah. I thought I'd be safe from that whole Nürburgring thing here in this recording booth. Uh -huh. Is the question old? Oh, we need to stop this. We need to stop this. Now, there is one big difference between Tesla and Neo. You see, Tesla has its network of superchargers, which are great. Neo does something different, though. It has a network of battery swapping stations. You see, in Neo's vehicles, you can actually remove the battery packs and replace them with fully charged ones. And this is really good because it doesn't matter how big your battery is, the time it takes to swap it is the same, regardless of the capacity. So the longest range Neo can do 465 miles on a single charge. Yet to swap the battery in that still only takes five minutes, which is about the same time it would take to fill up a normal internal combustion engine with petrol or diesel. It's a great idea. Neo is not only very popular in China, it's also a big hit in Norway. Now, the company is actually going to be expanding throughout the rest of Europe and into the US by 2025. Obviously, it's going to need a load of these battery swapping stations, but the company has said that it will have a thousand of them by 2025 outside of China. The next car company you need to know about is called Xpeng. So they do a Tesla Model S rival. However, it's considerably cheaper. It's about a third of the price, coming in at £27,000 doesn't quite have the range of the Tesla though, so an entry-level Model S will do about 400 miles on a single charge, whereas the P7 from Xpeng will only do about 225 miles. But maybe you're willing to make that sacrifice considering how much you'll save on the car. It's not a cheap vehicle though. Its chassis has been part developed by Porsche. Now Xpeng also did another car called the G3, which is basically an alternative to a Tesla Model Y. Once again, it's considerably cheaper. Starts from around £18,000. Once again, the range is less than the Tesla. It'll do about 250 miles on a single charge. Another way that the Xpeng is similar to a Tesla, but cheaper, is the fact that it has biohazard control. So obviously with Teslas, you have the biohazard air filter. The Xpeng though, they have a special system which can heat the car's cabin to almost 60 degrees centigrade to kill viruses. That's not the only tech that Xpeng are investing in. They're also investing in flying cars. Here is the Xpeng Voyager. Looks like a massive drone, doesn't it? Now, this is serious, though. It's not just a joke or a rendering. There's been $500 million worth of investment into this thing. Would you go up in it? Tell you the truth, despite the investment, it may never get built. But the P7 is being built and it's on sale already in Norway and Xpeng plan to actually sell that car in other Scandinavian countries and they'll obviously start to sell it in the rest of Europe as well. The next company is called BYD. Now BYD have been selling cars in China for a long time but they sell an electric car also in Norway called the Tang and it's effectively a Tesla Model X rival. However the range isn't as good as the Tesla, it's 250 miles. 
still its batteries are quite clever now one of the problems with lithium-ion batteries is safety you see if you damage one they can short circuit and they undergo something called thermal runaway which means that they start to overheat and they can get so hot they burst into flames and then burn for ages the blade battery in the tank doesn't suffer this problem and BYD wanted to show off just how stable its battery was so they used a hydraulic press to push a nail through their battery normally with a lithium-ion battery that would cause chaos with this one it didn't in fact it didn't really overheat at all now this technology is really impressive and it's one of the reasons that Tesla may actually take the battery tech from BYD to use in its cars and if you think that's like a big step for BYD not so much really because it already sells more cars in China than Tesla does so it's a fairly substantial company in its own right the next company you need to know about is Geely You've probably heard of them already. They own Volvo, Polestar, Lotus, Proton, and the company that makes the London taxi. They're huge. But now they've started their own electric car brand, Lincoln Co. Now their first car is imaginatively called Zero One. It's actually built in the same factory that they build the Chinese market Volvo XC40. So it shares similar underpinnings, which means it should be a quality product. It also uses that car's hybrid system as well. Because it's based on the Volvo XC40, it shares that car's safety systems. As a result, this Chinese vehicle managed to get a full five-star rating in the Euro NCAP crash tests. The next Chinese car manufacturer to take over the world is Great Wall Motors. So they produce a whole range of SUVs, some of which are named after coffees. Now, I can't remember the whole names of all these different cars and models, so what we're going to do is show you them on the screen now. And basically you'll get an idea of what they are they're a mixture of just pure petrol or hybrids or plug-in hybrids and they're already sold outside of china in places such as australia if lifestyle suvs aren't your thing though great wall also makes something called the tank it's basically their version of a jeep wrangler you know it's got a proper ladder frame chassis it's got locking diffs low range gearbox however unlike a jeep wrangler which now costs around £50,000. This thing will only set you back 20 grand. My favourite offering from the Great War is from its sub-brand Aura. It's called the Oxygen Pussy. No, um, Matt. No, it's O2 Cat. It's called the O2 Cat. <laughs> anyway, it's a little cutesy electric car to rival the Fiat 500e and the Mini Electric. And it's going to go on sale across Europe next year, priced from around £25,000. If you think that car's a little bit too normal for you they'll also be doing a hot hatch version which looks pretty cool finally we come to a company called hong chi now that translates to red flag the reason they got the name is because in the 50s and 60s they used to make the cars for the key members of the chinese communist party obviously the head honchos over in china now drive around in mercedes speaking of which hong chi produces rivals for the mercedes e-class and mercedes s-class however their range topping vehicle is actually an alternative to the rolls royce cullinan suv here it is it's called the ehs9 and you're probably thinking wait a minute that looks rather like a rolls royce cullinan there's a reason for that. The chap who designed it used to work at Rolls-Royce. Anyhow, unlike the Cullinan, this is an electric vehicle and it has a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack and 550 horsepower. The best thing about it though is that it costs £60,000. Compare that to the Cullinan which costs £250,000. Now the good news is that Hongqi is going to start selling its cars globally. At the moment they're producing 300,000 vehicles a year, but they will end up building more as they enter other markets. And one of the cars that they might be entering other markets with is the S9 hypercar. So it's a hybrid V8 that puts out 1400 horsepower and can do 0 to 60 in under two seconds and go on to a top speed of over 250 miles an hour. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know which is your favourite Chinese car in the comments below. Click on those windows there to watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can get a car wow to sell your car. All you have to do is upload some photos, give a brief description, and our dealers will bid on your car to make sure you get a great price for it.